the one box groove. That is going to be today's video. Are you ready for that? Let's go do it right now. Hey yo, what's up, I'm Animal Kitchen, and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, don't hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you'll not miss out on anything. Towards the end of this video, I'll tell you all about our community, namely on Patreon, and that is connected through Discord, so stick around for that. The One Box Groove, what is it? And how did this thing come to be? Well, there's one brain, which is the NPC Live, and I'm using it, I'm loving it, and it's really cool, but it crashes occasionally or worse sometimes it just stalls and it just doesn't recognize the MIDI now I can hear you say USB MIDI you've got a hub connected to it you're looking for trouble well it's convenient and I want to just work in a way that the machine is going to recognize my synthesizers the Octatrack on the other hand is my drum computer of some sort so I'm only going to use seven tracks on the Octatrack so whatever equipment you see it's only going to be the Octatrack I'm going to make a full track or at least a full groove on that thing this is also a groove that is part of my electronic songwriting for techno music course so if you enlist on that it means that that beat and all the samples and all the midis you're going to get that for free because it's also included in the course you should be able to make a groove out of maybe seven tracks on one box so this is the one box groove. Are you ready? Let's go do it. So everything you're going to hear today is embedded on a full course that spans over 20 videos and that course is called Electronic Songwriting for Techno Music. And I've got chord structures, triad stuff, I've got it, I've got like arpeggios, everything that you need to make a melodic techno track is embedded on there and you can get all the midis and the audio to really go with the course. Today I'm only handling the drums and it's going to be a brief overview because I just want to just tap into what it is that I need out of my boxes. So the Akai MPC Live, it plays a wondrous thing but it's not going to do anything today. As you can see here I've got the Uno Synth Pro X running, it's playing an arpeggio but also you won't be hearing it because everything I'm going to do is going to be done on this beautiful box right here. The Octatrack Mark II. So now let's play it, right? We'll start with the kick. On the mixer there's only one fader here and another fader here. The blue fader is the stereo output and the stereo output means everything is coming out of the stereo output except for the kick because that I want to control separately. I'm not mixing anything so everything is flat. However, I've got like sends here on which I can decide what I would like to send to the digital delay DD500 boss pedal that I've got sitting right here. But for now, we're only going to focus on this. Now, if you want to get a groove going, the first thing I would suggest is get an 808 Tom. I've got on track two an 808 Tom sitting. Listen to this. Bum, 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 bum. And the sound of the Tom is round, but at the same time, I think I enveloped it a little bit. Yeah, the release is on 100. Usually it's on 127. If you know the octa track, it will go from zero to 127, which means This would be zero, this would be infinite, and I'm going to 100. Because I would like, I would still like the belly of the kick as I call it. I like the release, but I don't want it to just be too long, but also not too short. Because it needs to lay a foundation on some sort of a low end content within the groove. And this is going to have a song and dance with a kick. Listen to this. Now, if you're clearly listening to the attack transient of the kick, which means the articulation, you'll hear the letter D. The letter D is also something that gets resembled on that 808 Tom. And I'm using the 808 Tom because for some reason it's one of the best things to use in the low end. It'll talk to the bass, but at the same time it will also talk to the drum. So that's your bridge in getting it there. If we're talking ABC priority, if we're talking about what needs to just play first, I am opting to go and play something that will stand out. But in itself, I need to dance to this. If I think that if I play this, after five minutes, you're going to just like punch me in the face, like, dude, really? But from the minute this is embedded, you got a bit of a boogie, right? Put up, doop, 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 do
dip 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 cool what i would also need is something of a clap in a way that it would fill up the mid-range now the mid-range is the frequency that tends to come over louder people will perceive mid-range as louder it might not even be necessarily louder there's a really um cool underdog video on uh, sound and perception where if you ask people which bass drum is louder you play one and then the other one's got a lot of mid-range and crunch crunch on it a lot of people will say yeah that second kick is louder it is perceived to be louder but technically it is not louder so your mid-range is something where you can emphasize your groove overdo it and people will get tired so you need to lay something down that will talk to the higher frequencies and the lower frequencies if you know the frequency spectrum it'll go from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz 20,000 hertz and i'll chop it up in three segments as well there's the low end there's the mid-range and there's the high end now the mid-range is as i told you where the pronunciation is but you need something that can talk to the bottom end talk to what you're hearing right now when you're talking about a clap or a snare or whatever and but it also needs to contain information that can talk to the higher end so if your highs are there something needs to also play there so what i do is i tend to take a, a higher kind of sound but i'll filter it down as you can hear right now it is a snare but if you play it together with the kick It gets a little bit of a of a catapult kind of vibe. The kick just just launches it, and with the tom, boom boom bam, boom boom bam, boom boom bam, boom boom bam. Amazing. Now I'm liking it so far because I'm thinking, okay, this is working, right? So this is basically just just a techno groove. Now in terms of leveling, if I'm looking at my kick, I'm making sure. That it's not going to be too loud, so it's never going to go into the red. Um, this means that, okay, now it's hitting 3 deep decibels, right? But then the rest of my loop is hitting minus 6 to minus 3, which means that this is going to be something like 3 to 4 decibels lower. So my kick will always stand out and I will keep it there. I'm not trying to add stuff to it or turn stuff up. You know, I'm going to add stuff to it in a second, but it should not start to drown out my kick, right? So this is a good balance. You can even debate that the kick could be um, a little bit softer, but there's more stuff coming in the drums and then you'll hear why it is playing the way it plays. Now, in terms of hi-hats, there's two hi-hats that I love three eyes actually i love the 606 hat i love the 707 hats the roland tr 707 606 and the 808 and the 909s those are hats that i'm always using but in order to get that high-end content that high-end frequency that sizzle that you would need for this kind of vibe i would go for a, a hat that plays just 16 so on track four or it's five even if I'm going to go into record mode, you see that this constantly playing every ticket, 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 no shuffle, nothing. Because I'm setting it there and the release is shorter. Usually the release is a lot longer, but I'm shortening it. Uh, again, if you're going to um, enlist for the full course, I will explain to you why I got to this length and what it is that actually is happening. Okay, now this thing is working. As you can hear, it flirts with the hats, the snare. And there's a little bit of reverb on the snare even that was also processed, but it also does a trick with. And the thing with the, what is it? I think it's a 606 hat, 606 closed hi hat. The difference between a 606 and an 808 closed hat is that a lot of people use the 808 hat. If you know Botson's, uh, Stefan Botson's sound, he's using an 808 closed hat and that's very thinny and sparkly and, and, and you know, but I need a little bit more grit. So the 606 hat almost sounds as if, it been, as, if, as if it's been processed through a guitar pedal of some sort. So I'm loving the fact that it sounds a little bit dirty. And for a sparse beat like this, I will not uh, ideally want to use up um, 
multiple things. So all the sounds need to really stand up for themselves and, and hold their own, really. So Cool. This is all basic drum computer stuff right now. I'm not really overthinking, overdoing anything, right? Uh, I'm not tweaking stuff, I'm not automating stuff. This just needs to sit where it is, it needs to stick in within that same, um, yeah, in that, in that same realm. Now, an open head is something that's going to give an extra push. So on track six now, I've got an open head, which is going to be the 707 head. Again, if I'm playing it, it sounds, like a 909 TR909 uh, hat, but it's really it really isn't because it's got a little bit more of a grit again. So and this hat has been shortened again uh, on the full course. I'm telling everyone why I did what I did, but this is just a run through of what's happening, so you can um, find out why these things work. Now you are paying attention because you know that I skipped tracks four. And seven, because this is just drum computer stuff. But now, at some point, in order to make this loop a little bit, um, yeah, a little bit groovier, I'm going to flirt with the outside world. So on track four, I've got the first top loop embedded. So going there, the loop plays this. Playing it. Heavily processed, a lot of stuff is happening. I do not ideally want to stick that much rumble and, and stuff on my groove. You can do it, but then the whole groove is congested. And what I've got right now is already, it's already holding its own, it's punching the speaker. This kind of vibe will really stand out on a big festival sound system. So what, I've di what I did is I went in and I sliced this sample. So if I'm going to go out of here, Let's get out of there, get out of here. And I'm going to go to slices, and then I'm on four. If I am uh, turning it on, you can hear that most of the, of the sample has been chopped up into bits. And, and then I play a theme with it. So um, getting out of this page, going back to my quick mute page is this is what it's playing now. Some slices have been pitched down, others are just, just doing the same thing. And then there's a clap there, but this clap is, as much as I hate layering my uh, kick drum and I tell anyone to not do it, I will layer my clap because playing the clap together with what's already on this loop, you get this. Okay, let's do a listening uh, exercise. Can you hear them part still? Focus on this clap here. Up. This is the clap with a little bit of room. And this is a snare with a little bit of room. But together they'll do this. So it now seems as if the snare that I already had, which is something I got out of the um, French inspiration kind of vibe because Ento, Joachim Pastor and Warakos and the guys out of that hungry music camp. This is the kind of clap that they use. Not too overdriven, not too techno -y, just a short kind of snare clap thingy. And it sets the groove apart. It does something different. But then with this loop. Okay, let's play the hats in. Let's see two, three, go. And this is flirting with the outside world, is what I say. You got something embedded which you would not find easily on a drum computer. It comes out of a loop, so I try to get inspired by also inf information I can get somewhere else. And now I'm thinking, this is cool, but it still is just a drum loop. Now, what I've done now on my track seven, that's what I always do, and this is the last track that's going to get added to my groove. This is going to be the pinnacle of this groove because I'm going to flirt with something that resembles drum sounds percussion um, it's it's coming out of my sample and hold catalyst um, sample pack which is also available on the analogcourses.com website um, and this is connecting everything together this sample 
place this. And much like a 303 would, it's jumping up and down in the frequency spectrum. So this sample consists of multiple things. Bright stuff, muffled down stuff, and then some sort of a bass line thingy. I don't know what it is. It's all the way in the back. Now this thing works together with the other sample quite neatly. Listen. Reverb on the master. Now, this is what I mean. You're going to create an infinite loop. As a matter of fact, you're going to create call and response here. One, two, three, one, two. And if I embed call and response on my drums, it means this loop can go on forever. Let's see what happens if we play everything in tandem. And it should work like... Oh yeah, I'm, I'm feeling this. I am feeling this. Yeah, this is cool. This is cool. Now, in order to really finish this up, this is the groove, and I've got some atmospheric loops playing on my Tantan black box. And this just runs for 16 bars. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, still the same sequence, three, four, Five, six, there we go, up riser. And this is how I just work my groove. This should be something that is already um, cool by itself. Now, if you create your drums on your Octatrack or Groovebox or whatever, and you approach it from this way, it would mean that if anything breaks down, you'll still have a blast. You still got enough stuff to work with. I mean, easily, if you know how to mute stuff in quick mute mode, you can just turn stuff on and off like I'm doing right now. And holding function, bam. Let's make a breakdown. Two, three, and. Taking that low end on the kick, adding reverb on the master, taking it out. Everything is gonna go in one, two, three, and. So, you can do this like forever. And if something breaks down here, or you need to rewire or restart something, God forbid, I've had it happen that I had to restart mid set something, then this is a way to work it. So, can you make one groove on one box? I just showed you how I did that. All right, so now leave a comment in the section below. Thank you for being here. You're absolutely amazing. I'm going to jam it out and uh, enjoy. Do you see how if you work multiple angles that it really is a cool thing that it really can work out for you? I mean, I did not, um, in the beginning when I started out, I did not know that it was possible. I was just like using the box to what the, um, uh, manual said it was for yeah yeah looper this and and sample that but I'm trying to just be as versatile as I can with certain boxes also every different box every piece of equipment has its own signature sort of like fingerprint uh, it takes a while for you to just detect and, and recognize it but they all sound a bit different is my opinion of it so when you are working an MPC a deluge a Octa track, um, what have you, even you know, a novation circuit, all these different boxes have different things. Drum computers also. So you have to really figure out what the sweet spot is. You have to really get into the flow of things. And I love my Octa track for that because it gets me into the zone pretty quickly. I think I can even say that it's got that old school 909 step programming kind of vibe to it which is what I love. So yeah, obviously I really love that thing. So that's how I work it. Leave a comment in the section below if you dig what's, what's been going on. And um, I told you, I promised that I was to, to, I promised that I was going to tell you about 
Patreon and Discord. Patreon is a support platform where if you like what you see, you love what you hear, you can support yours truly and you can get closer to me because we've got this chat thing going on over on Discord where we talk shop, we talk about performance, we talk about learning stuff, we talk about travel, we talk about gas, what to buy, what not to buy. You can also upload your demos there, pictures of different setups. So it's a lot of inspiration with a lot of like-minded respect for people that are actually ready to go and help you out if you've got more questions than answers which is never a good thing also my label infinity nfmt is in the works starting up i'm signing records i'm signing deals we're going to be making music with the community remixes and that kind of vibe so if you want to be embedded and included in that cool community do check it out patreon.com slash animal kitchen now next week there's going to be another video if you like what you see if you've got some topic suggestions, something you would like me to do a video about, just don't hesitate to uh, leave me a comment in the section below. Other than that, it's been a pleasure to host you. So you, sir, you, man, are still here. Uh, by this time, you're an absolute superstar. Thank you for watching. Uh, keep watching this space. I'm in a location. I'll be here next week on another video. Peace.